So one thing that has constantly been brought up over the last, well, definitely over the last week for people that I've been around, is that the Marmot is, although it's billed as one of the hardest events on the calendar, like for amateur riders or for, well, for any rider, quite frankly, it can be seriously affected by the weather. Like a really hot day, can actually slow times down and a more overcast day um, maybe even a little bit of rain can actually can actually make for faster finishing times in terms of preparation like there's, on, there's only so much you can do like to prepare for heat um, those of us that don't live in like really hot conditions or aren't exposed to those you know we can only really try and do some sauna work or take hot baths or try and ride indoors more with no fans and things like that. It's only so much I've been able to prepare for this. And I'm fully aware that going into it tomorrow is going to be a massive learning curve. And it's going to be less about trying to aim really high for a podium. And more about trying to survive and making sure I'm on top of things. And making sure I'm executing on things that will help me get to the finish line in the best possible shape. Or at least get me to the bottom of the Alp in the best possible shape. So that's something that we should always think about is... How can I best look after myself? What are the practical, thing, practical things I can do to get me as close to the finish line as possible without blowing up, overheating, you know, running out of food, things like that. So the Marmot, 175 kilometers, five and a half thousand meters of climbing. Virtually four climbs, technically. You have the Glandon, then you have the Telegraph, Galibia, which are pretty much two climbs just so long, you're spending so long climbing, and then out the rest of it. The course is like one giant like lap, one giant circle. And for lots of us, it's, it's about ticking off those climbs and making sure that we can get over them in the best possible shape. Tomorrow, there's gonna be plenty of feed stations, there's gonna be plenty of opportunities to um, stop for water uh, and food, but, with the help of Alp Cycles too, that I'm hoping to have some little helper on the road. So obviously taking you along tomorrow, I'm hopefully gonna be able to feed back during the event, how things are going, take you through it, but also learning from the experience and taking it to maybe a Marmot next year or an, a, a similar event next year. Maybe, who knows, but we get a chance to come out more to places like this to, to, to get used to altitude, to get used to heat, and also to get used to the descent. I actually want to give a quick word on preparation for this event in terms of training, because some of you might be wondering like how you even prepare for something like this, whether you do need big mileage uh, or whether you do need big climbs. Um, now, I've not had the perfect build-up, um, but I can certainly say that the bare basics of this event are that you are able to first and foremost ride for a long period of time like without becoming injured without becoming sore um and also you know without running out of energy um, so you want to practice all those things so if you can if you can ride for eight hours like on a weekend like one ride um but if you can build up to that then that's your first sort of tick in the box like that's your first preparation to think about you want to be able to get to that point where you can ride for eight hours even if it's a struggle but you're still able to do it to get that practice in from there it's then about thinking about the climbs and if you can't train for the climbs because you don't live near mountains you know like myself then you want to think about how you can simulate that on a flat road and it's perfectly easy to do that by just going out and riding 30 minute blocks, 45 minute blocks, one hour blocks at zone three or sweet spot or whatever you think you can sustain and manage over multiple hours. The final thing would be the icing on the cake for me, which would be a really fun workout. And that's to almost just ride all day, like ride for six hours, seven hours. If you think it's gonna take you eight, nine hours to finish the Marmot, like ride for six hours and then do one big like 30 minute hard effort at the end of those six hours. Like don't necessarily ride to a power meter number or heart rate number, just ride hard. And you will learn just how much, uh, how, how deep you can go. You'll learn how to pace it because everything will feel different. You'll feel tired both upper body, lower body. You, you'll tend to ride at lower cadence. 
things will become difficult. So it's worth practicing those, those sorts of things. The sun is setting. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Good morning folks, we're all set. Sun cream is the most important thing of today, I think. 29 degrees forecast for like basically the basically the bottom of the Alp. So it's gonna be hot, scorching. Um, I've got, I'm wearing my banner color with cargo bibs. So I've got an extra spot for bars, one bar, two bars. I've even got some, Still got electrolyte, which may come in handy at some point if I need to fill up with water. I want to add something to it, so electrolyte. I've got five bars with me, plus the two on the side, and uh, I'll try and make use of the feed stops if I become desperate. So that being said. It's go time. Have a good one. Hot dogs with tea, boys. There's cooking. <laughs> You're telling me. You didn't have to walk up here with a rucksack and a phone box. Doing a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 